Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome back to the Hand Tool Only build. This should have been named the Powerless Tool. I'm not using power tools um, at all, mostly. It was one slip up, but we're, we're, we're not talking about that. Uh, it's been a while. This year has been utter chaos and carnage. There's all sorts of stuff happening, but uh, it's all coming around and this is the instrument that I'm going to be concentrating on now until it is completed. So I'm going to do a quick recap just to uh, remind you, because it has been so long, what's happened so far. You've been asking for a hand tool only build for a hell of a long time. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to make it all out of this wood. It's a nice chunk of wood, <laughs> which means I'm going to be using a lot of hand saws. That sounded creepy. Hmm. Here we go. The start is made. I'm just going to split that chunk off. <laughs> All right. That's close enough. Mm. That's pretty close. Perfect time to light a fire, yeah? And there we go. All right. How would you define gluing music? <laughs> okay. Love this little drill late 19th century and still fully functioning.
I sort of thought that maybe the recap would uh, uh, be a good way to procrastinate because today I'm supposed to be chopping up by hand a chunk of wood into backs and sides and fronts and stuff. And uh, it's also, so far, the hottest day of the year in the UK. This is not going to be fun. At this stage, we've got a neck, the inlays are in, the neck is carved, the headstock is uh, a bit chunky. I might make that a little bit thinner, actually, looking at that. The fretboard and the neck were made out of the same piece of wood. Uh, the fretboard has been lightly roasted with fire. I'm going to need to stain the sides of that to, to make it look a little bit more uh, differentiated from the neck. But uh, we have some progress. Uh, I also want to slightly change the shape. I'm going to do a little bit of carving on that later. I don't quite like the feel of this shoulder here. Uh, with all of that said and done, though, I also need to crack on with the body. And with that in mind, this is the piece of wood. Now, I'm going to take four slices, four thin slices. Out of those, we're going to make the top, the back, and the ribs. I hope we're going to get it all out of that because the, the, the fewer slices I take, the, the, the less hand sawing there is. Turns out I'm not very good at sawing big things by hand. Uh, now, the eagle-eyed among you will remember the rear end of this guitar is actually a little bit wider than the wood. So I've got a tiny little triangle there and that is going to have to be made up by the front section and we're going to joint it on. I'm very excited about this build. Let's get on with it. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> so the method is figure out which face we're going to be cutting from and plane that face nice and flat then make a cut so I've only got one side to plane flat uh, after the fact. I will then repeat five or six times and uh, I'm not going to make you sit through all of it. We'll probably speed the whole thing up or, or something. But uh, yeah. So there's a, a little shake of some sorts here. So I can see that. Hear the difference there? Okay, and we've got a shake going there. So in reality, I actually do have to cut off from this face. Now, I like the idea of having volume 1.506, which I think, I think we established uh, was the specific gravity. No, it's the, uh, the cubic meterage of this palette of mahogany when it was originally sent through. So I like that and I think that I want to keep that uh, inside the instrument so you can see it uh, through the sound hole. Uh, so that's gonna complicate everything because I won't have a flat surface to start with um, because I'm gonna have to leave that raw. Sharpen the plane first. I'm going to be using the low angle jack quite a lot. I like the uh, adjustable mouth. Uh, with a particularly tight mouth, you get fine finish. And then if you open it up, you can take coarser. And uh, do you know what? That's the one. And luckily, it only just needs a little tickle. Yeah, it's pretty close. Gonna go straight, straight on the 8,000 grit. Shapton stones. <clears throat> and then onto a strop and that should be it. This is Tiger exploring the uh, new extension. He's been sitting on the roof for a while.
when you're sharpening, if when you hold the blade up, if along the top edge of it you see a, a, a tiny white line, that means that it's not sharp yet. And uh, the whole point is to have both surfaces uh, perfectly shiny and meet at, at a point. So I've still got a little bit of work to do, but not much, all good. All right, there is nothing for it. <coughs> I need to chop this off. <clears throat> okay, so my plan is to cut it fine, see how we go. Uh, essentially, I need to mark out the width that I want, uh, make a, an initial cut on either side at that depth, so that when I'm going through, I've got a guide on both sides that's going to help uh, keep my saw lined up and going all the way through and uh, we'll just see how it goes. Let's try this one for now. Sort of wanted to go that way. So I'm going to go to a more uh, a western style saw, let's just see if this makes any difference. Slightly coarser cut. Nah, that's still going off to the side. Alright, change. Fine, onto the big guns. This is a saw with giant teeth. It's designed for ripping, which is what we're doing, going down the grain. Uh, I was hoping that the ripping side of the Japanese blade would do it, but, uh, well, have a look at this. There's a little difference in between those teeth, isn't there?
<laughs> All right, the dust is flying. Swords create a lot of very fine dust, and uh, yeah, a mask is required even with all the windows open. Nice, okay, so a little thin there. Obviously that was where I was experimenting with uh, different saws, but the reality is, the reality is that we've got it. I've got about five more to do, but at this stage, what I can now do is, uh, I'm not gonna be working from a rough side. That's gonna be inside the guitar inside the sound hole. Uh, <clears throat> now, I need to tidy up that face with a plane. On we go. Old plane a rooney Okay. Just because one can build a guitar by hand does not mean that it's necessarily a good idea. A planar thicknesser, uh, we can buy Triton mini planar, Triton thicknesser, bench thicknesser, for example, <clears throat> at prices that when I started building 20 years ago, or so, um, would have absolutely blown me away and I would have jumped at the chance. And it's just about doing things quickly and easily and, 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 and accurately. Uh, the fact that I can do this by hand is cool, I suppose. And uh, it's really good exercise, which I could probably do with at this stage. Still, the whole time you're thinking, hmm, there is an easier way. There is an easier way. There is an easier way. The process worked. Having two guide saw cuts on either side uh, both gives me a visual guide but also something physical that guides the saw through and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. Positional defiance disorder, I have for the longest time avoided what everybody else said was amazing. I realized that that was a bit of a psychological issue with myself. I am now properly listening to Jimi Hendrix for the first time ever on camera. Holy... I was wrong. Um, yeah, 1994, the, the blues um, uh, album currently. Like, wow. I've been an idiot.
but we all knew that. Okay, well, play. A lot cleaner. A lot cleaner, hell of a lot cleaner. Okay, so yeah, here we go. Check that out. That's a much that's a much better cut than than last time. Uh, two pieces down, uh, at least three to go. <sighs> Just to prove I'm not uh, using the bandsaw. We're <laughs> gonna film the whole process, but uh, why not? Uh, yes. So this this saw is actually producing a lot less of the fine dust because it's got such giant teeth. Now, the, the reason for the giant teeth is exactly that. It's to create larger um, larger shavings, as you were, because that's essentially what it is. It's, it's creating shavings, but also it gives space for the shavings to be pulled through and away from the, the cut, whereas the finer saws were binding up. And as it binds up, that's one of the reasons why it uh, goes off piste. But uh, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. <sighs> yes, indeedy. Beautiful wood. This is an 11 teeth per inch rip blade on this Lidius and Baxel. Uh, <clears throat> and there's a difference in how the teeth are ground on a rip or a crosscut saw. So this, these are ground to, to rip down the lengths of boards. And uh, actually this is doing this is doing an amazing job with not that much effort. I wonder if I can use this saw to do the whole thing. Let's see. Okay, one final experiment, experiment in the interests of, I don't know, experimentation. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find a modern uh, uh, sort of jack saw, you know, sort of stuff. Um, I think I've got one around here somewhere. And those are, the teeth on those are um, <clears throat> hardened and designed to do a bit of both. So this is, uh, this is piece number four, <clears throat> and I'm leaving piece number five for another day.
It's very, 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 very hot today. <clears throat> and I am very, very old and apparently incredibly unfit. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a way to do it. Obviously I've started changing the angle, so I'm cutting uh, longer cuts and going from both sides. This is to guarantee that uh, as I hit in, I'm keeping it uh, uh, level and then I'm just taking off the center while those uh, previous angle cuts are keeping the blade uh, lined up. But yeah, it's, uh, <sighs> this is good. This is the bit I've been dreading, but uh, but it's good. A change in pace, a change in direction. Unless you found all of that sawing ASMR-ish or, or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to cut the fifth piece for now. I'm not going to thickness them. I'm going to move on to I'm going to move on to the to the fretboard because uh, too much of one thing is just too much of one thing. Uh, I'm and that's too much of talking. That's thirty seven seconds of talking. Forty sec. It keeps on going. All right. I need to do a little bit of extra carving on here, as I mentioned earlier. The headstock needs to be thinner and more delicate, and uh, we need to put some frets in. But I've got a mahogany fretboard here. I've got a quality, lightweight, relatively soft mahogany fretboard here. What to do? I, I really like the way it looks with this semi-burned pattern. I do need to stain the edge so that from the side it looks homogenous. Uh, And I'm not planning on playing this huge amounts, but I would like to stabilize the fretboard in some way, shape or form. I don't want to use epoxy. And a lot of people have asked me over the years about super glue as a finish and super glue as a stabilizing agent. And do you know what? I generally say avoid it. I really do. I'm going to open all of the windows. I'm going to put a gas mask on and, uh, apply some thin finish. A large amount of super glue on a surface like this gives off a lot of fumes, a lot of gases, it gets in your eyeballs, it tastes yucky, and it's probably coating everything. Don't do it. But um, well, I'm going to ignore my own advice and, and do it anyway. Why not? So I'm going to grab some thin super glue. Uh, this is a O3A. Uh, I kind of want to stock these guys simply because of the, 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 the phrase quality sticks um, and the fact that I'm sure they need to start making hockey sticks or, or something as a, as a side business just because of that. But um, I'm, I've been experimenting with this uh, for a few weeks just to see what it's like because I always am and uh, we're going to do some of this today. Nice. Okay, accelerator. The thing with accelerator is if you leave it to cure for 30 seconds or a minute, you vastly reduce that sort of white bloom uh, that you get. So if it's not necessary, just leave it. And in this case, I'm actually hoping that more is going to sink into the fretboard and solidify it. So. So yeah, there we go. I'm just going to leave this uh, to sit for a minute or two. Let's actually add just a little bit more. Get a more even finish here. Not sticking. All right, it's been a while. Accelerator now. <laughs> I like that. I 
that's going to take a little while. It's the wrong colour. Or is it? Okay. Now this, this gives me an opportunity to do something, uh, something else interesting. And uh, I have obviously flooded all of the fret slots and I'm going to have to recut those in a second. Before that time though, I'm going to apply the oil finish. So I'm going to apply oil finish. I'm going to apply it using wet and dry paper, uh, say 2000 grit, and I'm going to get a relatively buffed up, relatively shiny, relatively shiny finish. Uh, now, after that's dried, then we chop the fret slots and crack on. So I'm using the high build guitar finishing oil here. Uh, it's not going to be penetrating much through the uh, uh, through the super glue now, is it? And uh, just apply a few coats initially. I don't really want it to get everywhere else on the fretboard. And then once it's built up, go on to some 2000 grit wet and dry paper. Wipe the excess off and see where we sit. That's a pretty good looking fretboard. Uh, still feels natural, it feels like ebony, but well, why stop then? <clears throat> yeah. What do you think? This has given a very uh, antique feeling finish, and uh, and it's definitely not done. It is. It's certainly not done at this point. Uh, I'm going to do the frets. I'm potentially going to damage the fretboard going in. And this is why I, I never suggest that you lacquer a fretboard before you put the frets in. Always, 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 unless you're doing this, uh, put the frets in, lacquer over it. It's easy to remove lacquer off the tops of frets, etc. Uh, I may well need to go back in after this, put another coat of oil on and, uh, and buff the frets and the fretboard. Uh, I, I am doing this in the interests of experimentation and to show you guys that there are a million different ways of doing all of these things that can all get good results. 
there are probably only one or two fastest or bestest ways of doing things, but um, most of us enjoy going against the herd, do we not? Yeah, I think we do. Anyway, let's cut some slots, shall we? Okay, so I filled the slots with a little bit more super glue than I thought, which has caused a slight issue, which has culminated in a solution to a problem that uh, is actually quite interesting. We've we've got students at the Crimson Guitar st School who who've never used a handsaw and just don't have the level of control you need to have to cut fret slots, and. Uh, I thought that it might be interesting at some point to take a, a radius block, put a couple of magnets on the end, and use that as a saw guide for cutting fret slots when required. Never really tried it, but well, here we are. And uh, it works really well, even without the magnets. Right, so hold on, let me just out of interest mark this one. Not all of them are thoroughly full. Move the end of your thumb so you don't cut that off. I'm just marking a, a slot down the center. Line that up. And we're good. <laughs> That works so easily. And then once you've cut it, then I'll go over by hand. I've got the depth gauge there. I suppose we could have a depth gauge on the other side. Now, the reason Excuse me, the reason I had to do that is the same reason that we don't enjoy working with pine, for example. You've got really soft wood interspersed by with really hard grain lines. In this case, I was trying to cut a really hard line uh, that is surrounded on both sides by really soft wood and I wanted to push my saw off piste entirely. That cut was nearly entirely in the wrong place, and it, it didn't start that way, but the super glue just pushed it off to the side. So if you're doing this, well, this is another reason to avoid super gluing a fretboard, I suppose, uh, unless you're going to cut the slots afterwards. But we're done. We're good. Got a lot to do now. Been quite a bit of talking, and I haven't, by mistake, used a power tool. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have to do a hand tool only build uh, one day. <laughs> this is not it. I can't believe I used a freaking bench grinder. Uh, hi, how you doing? <laughs> ah, utter, utter fool.
Okay, uh, I've moved on. <clears throat> I've, I've moved on. I've not moved on. Let's get some frets in, shall we? Now, I've got some tiny fret wire. Uh, vintage slim gorgeousness. And, uh, <sighs> I'm going to cut them to size and then I'm going to detang them because I want to fill the sides, the ends of the uh, fret slots with dust and glue. Uh, I don't want to see the metal tang uh, down the edge. Uh, no reason other than I want to do something a bit different today. Let's just notch the ends off. Now normally I use glue to fill any gaps underneath the truss, underneath the frets. Somewhat confused this afternoon. And, uh, but I don't really want to do that with this nice finish that we've got on here. Uh, many guitars, most guitars in fact, do not have glued in frets. And I'm interested to see what happens. Now, I'm not entirely going back on everything I've said for the last 20 years, uh, I am going to uh, flood the slots from the side with super glue uh, when the frets are in. Oh, hold on. Always, always, always take a small triangular file and just open up uh, the, 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 trust, the slot. I don't think I should be building guitars today. I am obviously not on the top of my game. Take a triangular file. Open up the fret slot. It guides the fret in, makes it easier. Um, okay. That's interesting. So that fret came straight out. <clears throat> uh, these tiny frets have got a tang that is smaller, far smaller than the standard fret slotting saw that I use. Therefore, do not fit without glue, and that is incredibly annoying. It is. Okay. Uh, not beyond the realms of possibility to fix that. Now, something when you're restoring, when you're doing a refret, and if it's a refret that's been done multiple times, you can... Uh, Take the fret and bang the bottom of the tang, thus compressing it, making it wider, and uh, making life better for you. If you do this on a little vise or anvil or something like that, uh, yeah, you're golden. Or if you don't mind uh, denting your workbench a little bit, uh, but thus not dent the back of the fret, do it on your workbench. Now the other thing this is doing is uh, curving the fret a little bit because uh, of course I also forgot to pre-radius the frets 
because uh, today is definitely not a good day for me. There we go. That's feeling better. Come on then. Every problem has a solution, even if sometimes that solution is burning the guitar. We're not there today. We tap the fret ends in <clears throat> and then ease them out sideways, thus pushing the tang down and then through the fretboard. All right, this has been uh, this has been somewhat stressful, but we're getting there. It's uh, yeah, it's coming together. Let's have a look at the uh, the final one going in. So I suppose what might happen here is that as I hammer the fret in, which is uh, right on the edge of the body joint, or well, the neck joint, neck to body joint, uh, I might just knock this whole section of mahogany off. So uh, well, let's have a look. I don't think I will. But you can see how what was a very, very loose fret is now being held in perfectly. except at the end where we don't actually have a tag. So yeah, I'm gonna need some glue going under the slots to hold them in. I like, I like a lot. All right. Uh, I'm gonna leave this I'm going to leave this video here. We have gone from the insanity of cutting a huge amount of material down entirely by hand uh, on the hottest day of the year so far in the UK uh, to completely going off piste on the fretboard. I was not planning on using super glue. I was not planning on having to recut the frets. I was not planning on using a powered buffing machine to buff the finish on the fretboard. But you know what? If you guys knew what I was going to do next, if I knew what I was going to do next, I'm not sure you would be here to watch. However, next in this episode, uh, next in this episode, in this series, I'm going to cut the fret ends off. I'm going to uh, put the correct bevel on them. I'm going to recarve a little bit of the neck shape, make the headstock a little bit thinner, and uh, I am going to process down the uh, the tops, the top and the back at the very least, join them together and start making material. Uh, there is also going to be, at some point, an interstitial video where I take a standard hand plane and turn it into a thicknessing monster. Uh, essentially what I want to do is take a 
probably a standing number four or something like that. And in the same way the Bridge City Toolworks does it, I want to put uh, a pair of fences on either side that act as a depth stop so that uh, if the blade is perfectly flat and I go over a piece of material, it is down to the thickness I want. I don't know why I want to do this. It's pretty much pointless because, you know, you don't need a depth stop. Just use a plane. But, I mean, it could be pretty cool. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Click like, subscribe. Uh, most importantly, go make some sawdust. Catch you on the flip side. Thought I'd drop the neck there for a second. We're good. Hand tool build my end.